Hello students, we are continuing with punctuation. We did semicolon last week and now we are focusing on colon. Uh, a colon is these two dots. Therefore, the semicolon is not totally a colon. It's got the top half of the colon and the bottom half is a comma, hence semicolon. There it is. It's not a colon, it's a semicolon because it's not totally a colon. There's why we have the name. All right, so I have these three rules here, but I'm actually gonna give you a fourth one that I want you to add to the list. So I'm gonna give you this one first, um, and then I'm gonna have you scoot in the next one, and then we'll do these as three and four. I couldn't edit the document because I'd already sent it to you, but I'll have all the examples and details on the next page, so. But let's focus with this one. So um, you're gonna have a no red ink, and this is one of the major things it's gonna focus on is doing lists. You already know to use a comma in a list when you have um, three or more items, right? So three or more items, apples, bananas, and peaches, you've got to use the commas. But now we're talking about a list. When do you use a colon? Well, it's when it uses certain types of words. So it says use a colon to introduce a list of items that ends a sentence. Only use after words like these, following or as follows. If it's helpful to you, you can add quotation marks here, such as these, following or as follows. Do not, here's the important thing to highlight or underline or just remember, do not use to only start any list. So if I had, sorry, so I was going to try to add an anti-example, but when I'm in present mode, I can't do that. So if I just said, um, I love apples, bananas, and peaches, there's no colon used there because there's none of that language that introduces it like the following be sure to bring the following items or these items or the list is as follows but if you just say I love apples bananas and peaches you definitely use the, the commas because that's the comma rule but you wouldn't use a colon there the colon is when you use sort of what they call I think on no red ink Q words C U E Q that Q U to hey a list is coming right so with this one it's at the grocery store please get the following colon apples bananas and peaches you if you had it away if you deleted it it wouldn't make sense because it would make you read it like this at the grocery store please get the following apples comma bananas and peaches and you would say well what what do you mean by the following apples is that a certain type the comma there or the colon there indicates a list is coming and this word is like a cue that a list is coming so following the Q word, you add the colon. At the grocery store, please get the following. Colon, apples, bananas, and peaches. Or for the camp out, please bring the following items. Colon, sleeping bag, backpack, and a change of clothes. Or I've been to the following cities, colon. Uh, Bangkok, Hong Kong, and Grand Rapids, Michigan. You know, whatever you want to say. But you need to use the Q words. You can't just say, um, I love Bangkok, Shanghai, and Michigan. Then there's no colon because you're not using that Q language. Once you do the exercise, it'll be really clear. All right, so I'm going to have you add a second one here because these two are, you know, not as crucial. You're not even tested on these in no red ink. Uh, but the second one you are. So I want you to hit enter after peaches, and you should get a number two. Maybe you'll have to hit enter again. And then this is what I want you to add here. So this comes right from new, No Red Ink, so if you want to review it, you just click on Lesson. This is the rule. So rule number two is this. Two, use a colon between two complete thoughts, or you could write in parentheses, independent clauses, right, because that's what we've been calling them. Complete thoughts, use a colon between two complete thoughts when the second one explains or summarizes the first. Okay, so forget about the incorrect example. Let's focus on the correct example. So add this as an example in your notes. This is my point, colon. If we buy Judy a plane, she might take us for a ride. This is not an example of the summarizes. It's an example of the explains. But first test, is it two complete thoughts? Is it two independent clauses? This is my point, period. Independent clause. Is this an independent clause? If we buy Judy a plane, she might take us for a ride. Yes. So it fits that first definition, two complete thoughts. But then you ask yourself, is this explaining this? Yes. This is my point, colon. Or this is my question, colon. 
or I have a dilemma, colon, and then you go on to explain whatever the question, the point, or the dilemma is. Okay, so maybe you can write your own example and, and start it with a different one. Maybe you want to start with another example and say, this is my question, colon, and then you'd, you'd complete, you'd add something after the, the colon. That's a complete thought question. Um, what time is band practice on Thursday? Okay, or this is my concern, or I'm concerned about this, colon. Um, I don't have enough toilet paper for the rest of the week. <laughs> Um, so you ask yourself, is it two clauses that are independent, meaning can they stand alone? And is one summarizing uh, the first part, or is one explaining the first part? Then that's when you use a colon, and no red ink will test you on that. Um, here's, oh look, Mrs. Kelly, I love it. Uh, here's another one where you use the colon, whether it's explaining or summarizing. Mrs. Kelly's rule was clear. Now we're explaining the the rule, don't chew gum in her classroom. Same thing here, Ben's idea was smart, colon, only give his sister the cookie after she solved the math problem. So you look, they are both doing explanations here. They're explaining this first part, but these are both independent clauses or complete thoughts as no writing describes them. Um, this is my point, same thing. Okay. It does a little review of semicolons, too, so if you want to do that. Okay? <coughs> so that's rule number two. Again, to explain, add rule number two under colon and write this here. Use the colon between two complete thoughts when the second one explains or summarizes the first. Add this one as your example, and feel free to add your own example if you want to do that. Okay? This is incorrect. This is my point. Comma. A comma is not sufficient. That's why it's incorrect. Okay. Then I'll quickly do the next two. So this now is number three. Use a colon after the greeting of a business letter, meaning not an informal letter, but a formal letter. Dear Mrs. Overman, or to whom it may concern, or dear employer, or, you know, dear prospective employer, or, you know, something that would be formal, colon. Okay? And then use a colon to separate chapter and verse in the Bible as well as hour and minute. I know you guys know this stuff, but I just put it on there just in case. It's probably more of like an ERB thing, um, you know, just to make sure you knew that more simple application of uh, colon. 7 colon 15, uh, Matthew 1 verse, verses 10 through 15, or verse 10 if you're just talking about 110. That's what the colon indicates there. Chapter, verse. Okay, now you can take your no red ink. Good luck.